Hello, and welcome to our new Android Basics series. In this video series, we'll teach you how to use your Android smartphone or tablet. Today's class will explain what Android is and how Android is different from iOS. We'll walk you through basic navigation, configuring your home screen, and changing your settings. Let's get started. What is Android? Android is an open source mobile operating system created by Google. An operating system, or OS, is a software that allows your computer to run. For example, many desktops and laptops have an operating system called Windows. You might also be familiar with another popular operating system called iOS, which is the operating system for iPhones and iPads. iOS is exclusive to Apple devices, hence why many other companies use Android rather than developing their own operating systems from scratch. Because there are many companies that make Android smartphones and tablets, there are a variety of different devices to choose from. Things like price, camera quality, and hardware can vary widely between Android devices. This amount of choice can be overwhelming, however, so be sure to read reviews before purchasing a device. Check out websites like Android Authority and Android Central to keep up to date on what's coming out. In addition to a variety of hardware from different companies, there are also many different versions of the Android software which have been released many of which were named after desserts, although Google has stopped this naming scheme with the release of Android 10. If you have an older device, it's possible it may not be running on the most current version of the Android software. In addition, unlike iPhones and iPads, it is extremely possible for new devices to be running older software. Each device manufacturer can choose when or if a specific model gets a software update. If a new version of Android is released and your device hasn't received it yet, check with your manufacturer to see when the update is expected. Generally, Google Pixel devices are among the first to get software updates and new features since both the hardware and the Android software are developed by Google. Let's go ahead and look at an Android device. I'm currently using a Samsung Galaxy Tab E running on Android 10. Be aware that your device might look and operate differently from mine. I'll try to address those differences as often as possible. Android devices are primarily navigated with three buttons towards the bottom of the screen. Home, Back, and Recent Apps. The style and appearance of these buttons, as well as whether or not they are physical buttons, will change depending on the device you're using, but they generally have the same functions. The Home button allows you to return to the home screen. So if you are in an app and want to exit it or open a new app, tap the Home button. The back button, which looks like a back arrow, will take you back one step. For example, if I'm looking at a list of search results and I tap on a page but then want to return to the search results, I would tap the back button. The last button, Recent Apps, will show you a list of all of the apps that are currently open on your device. To close an app, either swipe it away or tap the X in the corner of the window. The Home Screen The Home Screen is the main screen that you will see when you boot up your device and navigate past the lock screen. Let's go over the different parts of the home screen. First, we have the status bar. This gives you important information about your device, such as the time, battery level, the strength of the cellular signal in your area, and whether or not you are connected to Wi-Fi. Next, we have the notification shade. Notifications are alerts from your device that will give you important messages about apps, system updates, and more. To view your notifications, slide your finger from the top of the screen down towards the bottom. It may take some practice. If you've done it correctly, you'll see your notifications. Then we have apps and widgets. App stands for applications. These are small pieces of software that will help you with a specific task on your device. For example, Google Maps can give you directions and Facebook allows you to check your Facebook account. There are many different types of apps on your device. Some apps are pre-installed, meaning that they are already on your device when you first turn it on. You may see pre-installed apps from your device manufacturer, service carrier, or Google. If you don't see an app that you want on your device, you can download it from the Google Play Store. Widgets are applications that work directly on the home page. For example, the Google Now Bar lets you do a voice-directed or typed Google search without going to Google Chrome first. At the bottom of the screen is the Favorites tray, where you can place all of your favorite apps for easy access. You can also swipe your finger across the screen to look through different pages of apps. Still not seeing an app that you're looking for? Check the App View. App View is available by pressing this button on older devices and by swiping up from the bottom of the screen on newer Androids. Android home screens are extremely customizable. Not only can you choose which apps are on it, but you can also add widgets and change the wallpaper, allowing you to make the device look and feel like your own. To add a new background, hold your finger down on the home screen and tap Set Wallpaper. 
Then choose a new background from the default wallpaper or choose a photo that is saved to your device. To delete apps from your home screen, tap and hold the app you want to get rid of. A trash can will appear at the top of the screen. Note, this will only discard it from the home screen, not the device. You can also hold and drag apps to new locations. To add apps from App View, look for the app you would like to add to the home screen. Tap and hold it, then drag the app to the page on the home screen you would like it to go on. To add widgets, hold your finger down on the home screen and tap widgets. Then choose the widget you're interested in and drag it to the home screen. After you've had your device for a while, you may need to change some of your device's settings. To do that, go to the Settings app. The Settings app usually looks like a gear. Let's go through some of the basic settings and how to change them. Brief disclaimer, the Settings menu can be organized very differently depending on the version of Android you're using and what specific device you're using. Many of the settings I'm going to go over today are very basic and are available on most Android devices, but they might be in a slightly different location or have a different name. So just be aware of those differences. Connecting to Wi-Fi. To connect to Wi-Fi, choose the Wi-Fi option in the settings menu. Then choose your Wi-Fi network from the list. Remember that some Wi-Fi networks may require a password. Bluetooth. To connect to Bluetooth, choose Bluetooth from the settings menu. Depending on the device you are connecting to, you may need to put the device in pairing mode for it to show up on the list. Once you see your device, tap on it to connect it. Sounds. Use this to adjust your volume and select a new ringtone. Notifications. In notifications, you can choose what apps are allowed to send you notifications. Make sure to turn off notifications that you don't want. Display. This allows you to change important settings like how bright the screen is, how long it stays on for, and when the blue light filter is activated. Device care. This section allows you to check your battery life as well as how much storage your device has. If you have a lot of pictures or apps on your device, your storage may become full, which will prevent you from downloading new apps or taking new pictures and videos. It's a good idea to visit this section frequently and free up space when you can. Apps. Apps will show you a list of all the apps on your device. You can also delete them by tapping on an app and selecting uninstall. But just as a warning, not all apps can be deleted. If you don't see the uninstall option, be sure to skip it. Software update. In this area, you can update your Android software. Before doing an update, you'll want to have your device sufficiently charged or connected to a charger and be connected to the internet. Some updates are quick, while others can be very long, so be patient. About device. This section will tell you all about your device, including what version of Android you're running, the device's serial number, and other important information. That's it for your first Android lesson. Keep an eye out for our next video, which will be on apps in the Google Play Store. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye.